Morning. Ich freue mich, dass ihr alle wieder hier seid. Happy that you're all here again. So early in the morning. I'm an even happier to be able to introduce Maha and Kabirman. Here is, to the best of our knowledge and conscience, phrases in politics. I have full confidence that you will be entertained this evening. This evening? Good day, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear, dear voters, participants of the 32nd Commission Asia Congress, representatives of various social groups, spectators, uh, new receptacles, friends. I'm happy that today, here, in front of us, in front of you, to be able to speak. Somehow, we don't look like revolutionaries. Well, not like those, what people think, what people think they look like. But nevertheless, we're in the middle of a revolution, which on the one hand we're observing, but on the other hand, which we are also experiencing in various ourselves. The question which is posing ourselves is, are we, a, are we subjects of change, just like classical revolutionaries, or are we able to influence where the tra tra travel journey is going? Or are we just objects of the new areas that the revolution is using first? So this, we're talking about the fundaments of the lives of the generation that comes after this. We know that today we have to act. That has to be the request. All right. This, this was the. This was not an original from, from Kai, but this was, except for the few one, there was the original uh, speech by Angela Merkel, except for the um, text, the 32 Congress bit. Yeah, including the bit about the revolution. But as you can see, this is about phrases and empty phrases. So because we want to be scientific, we start with this definition. What is phraseology? It's the study of <laughs> phrases, or i.e. Fixed, fixed statements. The new th <laughs> We are doing the phraseology, i.e. The, the study of empty phrases and statements. Well, what are these things? What are these things? We recognize them. They don't present little to no new information, which is an important criteria later on. We want to discover them later on. And this, exactly those things that don't present new information are probably, well, they are, you know, they, they, they have a good, they sound good. It's not easy to spot, and they're obviously true, in quotation marks. Well, we can also talk about Blechsprech, uh, i.e. Um, but it's indeed, this is really, that's what it's called. It's just called in, in Greek. The, a pleonasm is exactly that in Greek. Yeah, we fang an. All right, let's get started with hypotheses. Uh, all right, okay, okay. We're not quite awake yet. All right. Blocks and phrases and commonplaces have, a f have the following function in the political speech. This is our hypothesis. They're not just randomly there to lengthen the text. They have a fixed function. And we want to demonstrate that later on using some examples. We want to... Hide, hide things that belong together. The information density has to, should be lowered, or it should be you should be distracted. You should be distracted from the fact that there is little information being conveyed. We later on will have a press statement which has zero information content, and we'll look at it later. Where sometimes they want to distract about the actual heart of the matter. On the other hand, and this is this also affects journalism. They. They want to they want to be quotable, create quotable phrases without making it clear what the actual position of the people is, and they should co generate the impression with a lot of people, a lot of people that 
that these these people have heard what they want to hear. These these phrases are often open in a semantic sense, such that everyone could add their own thoughts into it. We will later see the example of this, where someone is holding a press conference and everyone hears what they want to hear. It's, it's, it's a famous text as well. Right. So finally, it's buzzwords about buzzwords. Buzzwords that people want to hear, they need to be heard, they need to be used. And they need to be contextualized, perhaps using a harmless context. And now we get to the first example. This is now Kai's turn. We have a hot iron. This is this is a phrase, immediately a phrase. You now hear, you will soon hear a famous politician who talks about, about exports or in, or exports that we want to, to do of tanks to Saudi Arabia, which are not completely uncontroversial. We hear it in two versions. The weapons, the weapons of which you are happy that they be that uh, be delivered, but they don't threaten the Iran, they, they, thre they threaten the democracy. They don't uh, protect Israel, but they they they, endanger, they protect a feud, and they endanger us, which we have learned one thing. Uh, we've learned one thing in the West. In the past, we thought, well, uh, the U.S. the U.S. foreign policy is fine because the devil that we know is better. Well, we know that this is, can cause problems, and we send weapons, and then later on have to send soldiers to, in order to do peace missions to take the weapons away again. That's not a very clever foreign policy. It's very dangerous for our soldiers, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, the, the text, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty obvious. Well, he, he used a few, a few phrases, for example, that he wants to say something in particular clarity, but to summarize, it was pretty obvious this was in 2011. So Simi Gabriel was, a opposition, was in the opposition at that time. The same politician speaking about the same topic with the same base idea in 2014. Well, religious or ethnic, from a, from an ethnic point of view, the Arabic space was, has always been complex, more so today than ever. So many of these conflicts are being done in a violent way. So further tension could be discharged in a military way in the future. So it has become inevitable to send weapons, use, uh, after careful checking, send them in the, in, the, in the region. But at the same time, the the mass of the violence should not lead us not lead us to not differentiate between different states in the Arabic room. But we should be careful and carefully treat every individual case. The oft requested delivery of uh, panzer tanks um, not, should not be decided from a social economical point of view, but on the basis of a very differentiated and well thought of analysis. And if, if I, with my analysis on this basis, this basis, that this cannot be justified based on this, but we have to regularly check whether this is is still valid or if it's changed on the basis, on the political, on the social conditions, on location. Once, once again, for everyone who, for, for whom it was too much or it was too fast, once again, the same topic. The same, the same, the same idea. He still has the same position that he rejects the export of Leopard tanks. The, just the sound is a lot different. In 2011, there were weapons and they were dangerous uh, for everyone, and they were a stupid idea. In 2014, or right now, he's part of the, the the government. So now there are weapons with systems that can no longer be justified, but they have to continuously be checked if that's still true. So, well, the language is very nicely hiding the fact that he's has the same opinion, but he no, it's not no longer so opportune to actually say it so clearly. Now we come to the uh, seminar part. Well, what are the types of phrases? What what kind of things are? I've characterized them as follows. The, re, the real phraseologism, or so-called collocations, or we have commonplaces, 
and we have pleonasmas, which are well known. Then we have the hendiades, and then we have uh, fr uh, words empty of of meaning. There's a few famous phrases. Is is, is uh, we had they had this very well known. Everything was became very well known. We have well, we can do it. Is an is another sort of optimistic base base idea, but we don't know what exactly is been. I.e. sort of high-ranking talks, um, so high-ranking in talks mm, mm, that fits well, but there are no low-ranking talks. So, mm, anyway, so German ground, also also very, very famous. Also, on German ground, there should be German law, as Pafale said. There was, there's a whole, um, there's a whole, there's a, there's another talk later on about space. There's good work is being done, so there's no bad work. The limits of endurance is another sort of classic one um the sort of the mission the mission mission of the people it's it's gone off from the table the red line etc 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 there's a special example here so what we notice um to be to be happy about a certain something is is a double is it in some say the double statement is in some sense you're satisfied but you're also expressing something so so somehow here are some examples uh, so so then I have here a whole group of examples, something about clearly or saying it in a clear way. So say it clearly, to, to speak clearly, use clear words, or to be, take a clear position. It's not, it's not obvious how you can be an take an unclear position. And Pofalo wants additional clarity. So I d it's not clear what, what could it be. If it's additional clarity, is it is clear or not. Ah, and then the famous commonplaces I already had it once. What does it even mean? The, the grass is green is, a, is one example, a commonplace. It's obvious because it's red here on my shirt. So listeners have already, all, my listeners designed this for me. Anyway, so for example, nothing is easy. A lot of things remain difficult in Afghanistan. Well, as, I, as mentioned, the commonplace is something that's obvious from the beginning. The situation is serious. The Miser, Interior Ministry. Or we can only get something done if everyone does their part. Again, the Maizière, Interior Minister. And now the sort of the crowning glory, which has a me has reached meme status, without, without which was already mentioned. Um, well, some hackers could hack something, but um, but the reliability and security of the new personal. Uh, an anti card is not is not p called into question right talk about what a pleonasm is as mentioned there um, you cannot negate them they're constructive talks you cannot you can have any unconstructive talks so valid law so invalid law is not really feasible see, tireless tireless um, tireless work you can't be uh, you can't be tired. Tired work. So future, future potential dangers. So, so potential dangers is already um, talking about the future. So it's doubly futured. Doesn't really make sense. So innocent victims. Well, there are no, uh, you know, victims that can be blamed. Uh. Well, we always talk about. Well, difficult situation. There's no, there are no simple situation. Yeah, then we now have the situation with difficult, but difficult is not really adding anything here. Or the very specific individual cases. Well, unspecific individual cases are weird. I think it says on my shirt. Ah, all right, it says this on my shirt. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm firmly convinced of something. We. We, you, you, you never, we never really say I'm unfirmly convinced of something, or I have complete or utterly complete trust, but but half full trust is not really feasible. Or the unfu uh, half full um, sympathy doesn't really fit. This is because the first part of this pluralism is unnecessary. It doesn't add any extra information. A special case. Is is also a case of pleonasm is the hendiades is 
is Greek. Hen means one, dia means through, dia means one through two. One thing is expressed by two things. We had that a lot to the best of our knowledge and, uh, knowledge and conscience. So knowledge and conscience, they're similar. You can't quite work out what the, the difference. So knowledge is also conscience. It has to do with morals or t according to law and order. So, so maybe law will be sufficient or order will be sufficient, but they're combined. They're combined to, the, to one thing that say the same thing. Open and honestly. So oh, just open or honestly will be sufficient, but open and honestly, they say two because it sounds better, because it ta has more mass, because it just enhances the whole effect. It's not just it's not just the conscience; it's also the knowledge. It's not just the yeah. It's just, it just sounds better if you use two, and then and then to blow to text or the empty empty words are even better. The the method or uh, or new, the new, the new, the new the the executive, executive uh, order, which is even, uh, you know, Mimizé is part of the executive, so he talks about executive, erfahren, so I mean, uh, trust, or situation or happening, which often there is a situation or happening at work, just the work, we we do work, or the installation, or we claim something or seen as often or the scene of the, p the people putting things at risk yeah all right we carry on there's another interesting area about theory where uh, ne ne neologisms where words are cre newly created he blog a lot about this in the newspeak blog in a podcast. First is data retention. So now it's called uh, traffic data retention. So it's all, always about not really saying what's being done, but, but uh, also in the airport. Uh, Airport order. It's always about and hotspot is also about the not doing Meisterin dieser Neuschöpfungen. So the queen of uh, neologisms. So those that don't have a perspective to stay here also have to leave again and we so we talked about uh, getting rid of incentives that cash, cash rewards in uh, asylum homes uh, not uh, are reduced and for and for uh, people being home again will be reduced and people back again. It's not cut, it's seconds. And it's original text from Angela Merkel. And there was a uh, really increase of neologisms. No staying perspective, it's like you do get in here, like misincentives means that uh, if you take, if you get, if you take account of your uh, right of asylum, then get some money to get be able to stay, and so it could be an incentive to stay here for the money, and then it has to be reduced so that so uh, cash needs um, placed by things, cash, cash rewards, not really sure what they will get anymore, and enforceable uh, extradition. So that people are, people are needed to don't 
Menschen ausreisepflichtig sind, also wieder gehen müssen. Also Diejenigen, die hier erstmal auf Asyl hoffen, die sehen das gar nicht. So people that have that hope for asylum, they don't really know about German law and they know we can ask for asylum and some are really disappointed. So where do these empty phrases come from? Try to sort through this, where they come from, uh, from which area these language pictures are coming from. The maritime metaphors or pictures, all is full. So it means, yeah, only some people, limited amount of people can go in because otherwise they'll drown. And it's a tough metaphor to say you can't get in here. The refugee uh, wave, storm, flood, or tsunami. It's not so funny because it's like it's a picture to invoke fear. And so it's, it's meant to make people fear refugees. Oliver had like a really good, good picture from there. So, so if a few cats come towards me, then I want to pet them. But if a cat tsunami wants to roll at me, then I'm taking a weapon and want to shoot. So everybody's in one boat. So maybe we, we are in the boat, but we want to make sure that the others don't get in. We are active. Richtung, wir können die alle draußen halten. Take, the rudder right around so that we can do something. Um, the, sehr das alles the pilot is going offboard. Not important. Bellicisms uh, taken from the area of war. So goal oriented, loading, cash registers. On the marsh, and then in the sense of refugees, there's there's a storm or attack towards something. Refugees are storming towards something. So here you can see a few uses. Also, in, 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 invoke to use fear, so meant to induce fear. Of the people that are only don't always want to destroy our nice Germany. So it's like German tablet built, NTV. Like traffic metaphor, also popular for internet, it's like very popular. So like oder irgendein Internetkonzern wie die Telekom auf der Überholspur or a company uh, over track left track or the brakes are put on green light is given was uns wichtig dabei ist es geht nicht darum zu lügen ja, also das ist die, diese Metaphern haben nicht so it's not about we don't want to talk about lying it's not really meant to talk about they're not really meant to lie but they really meant to say, but I don't know what's about talking about the real problem. Like technology and physics is also very important. Things are put on ice or like emetically spirals of violence. Or it's also popular. So what's left over? Wie gesagt, es geht nicht um Lüge, das ist der eine Punkt, der uns wichtig ist und der zweite Punkt ist, das Zuhören lohnt. Also das ist nicht so listening is really, really important, like it's not just noise that you should not listen to, but it's about information and them and get the information behind the empty word. So try to find out what's what's left if you if you take out all the bloody speech and pleonasms. So it's, uh, treason is left over if, if you 
take all the stuff away. So in the beginning of August, when Mr. Range, the general state attorney, also press for keeping the security and objectivity of the investigation. In July of 2015, I commissioned an external uh, report where the investigator should confirm or not whether the published leaked documents are uh, uh, contain state secrets. And he so far confirmed that the, that the documents probably constitute uh, state secrets. And with that, he confirmed our, our opinion and those of the police intelligence services. I gave this opinion to the I gave this opinion to the Interior Ministry uh, yesterday, and then I was informed to drop the investigation and stop the uh, stop this report. So freedom of speech is very very important, but even in on the internet is uh, freedom of speech not not without limits, and they still have to. Call Still have to adhere to laws, and they can. The justice is also protected by the constitution, and uh, influencing our investigation because it's not opportunistic for politics. It was my, I felt it was my duty to inform the public about this. Thank you very much. This is, I'm just going to read the whole text. I'm just going to, and I highlighted the areas, the bits that have actual new information, and the whole, everything else is just unnecessary. Right, so just to begin with, the adjective. The, big, the, the beginning is to, to, to prevent, to protect the objectivity of the investigation, whatever, he has to say that anyway. Anyway, the, the independent expert, what, what, what else? If they're not independent, then they're not experts. Then, well, it definitely, independent is unnecessary. Given his, his temporarily judgment, his, I left the temporary in because it's important at the beginning. It gets repeated later, but it's less important later, obviously. And then the actual information that the so-called documents, the sort of preliminary judgment, according to the uh, expert, did contain some state secrets. And um, then he told the ministry this, and it told him to stop asking for the report and and he followed he followed suit. So the whole second part is just just full of phrases or commonplaces. So because since no one doubts that freedom of press is very important, no one doubts that you don't need to do a press conference to talk about that. Then this um, this this freedom of speech is not uh, doesn't have limits even in the internet. That's obvious. Everyone knows. It does not it does not free journalists from uh, following the laws, which is obvious also obvious. So the whole rest is unnecessary. Well, it's not completely unnecessary because he, well, he also says that the sort of the influence is unbearable. He does not say he didn't say that uh, was taken was taken. He just says if, if someone does take influence, it's unbearable. And given given the given the accusations, given that the accusations that are being done, but he didn't make any accusations. So you can only imagine what kind of accusations. So if he says it's unbearable that there's influence being taken, so you can't interpret that he means that there is some kind, he's accusing someone. Well, well, he is a, he is a lawyer, so he doesn't want to make himself vulnerable. So a lot of people read between the lines that he's accusing, making the accusation that someone did take influence. 
Well, on the other hand, it's obvious that, well, the Attorney General is indeed, does need to take orders. Well, maybe the uh, sort of taking influence is unbearable, but but it's not, he's not being accused of it. And then the, at the end, we have this phrase, I, I, I felt compelled to inform the, the, the public about this, about what? But things that you already knew, or about the fact that freedom of speech is an important, important thing? It's not obvious. So at the end, we were just a bit left a bit clueless as to what hmm, we can speculate. Well, he already thought about, predicted that he might get fired, and so he he put he put in a text here without a real accusation, but from which he could derive an accusation. Okay, he. He is a little bit more warlike example. Thomas Nimizero and Tim Mystery at during the um, meeting of the Federal Bureau of uh, Police. So as you can see, under the uh, under the heading terrorism in Europe. Uh, okay, I, it's not clear what that's talk, what's going on here. All right. Well, let's listen to it. Let's start listening. So this the word situation is already mentioned. It often it often occurs. There is a debate, how do we deal with the public? And I want, I want to clarify my position with regards to that. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot discuss every single piece of evidence like this, neither before a situation, or especially not during a situation, not even through press activities, PR, and especially, and most of the time, not also not after a situation. Why is that the case? The first point is, a lot of these pieces of evidence or hints are from institutions or people or official entities which do not want to be known as the source of the piece of evidence. If this happens, there is there is the danger that they will no longer give a hint in future because they or their source from which they have derived the piece of information they might be in danger and would not be in, of our interest. I, I don't. I mean, I mean, it's not in our national interest to lead such people to no longer give us such piece of information. Right. Here's the piece. Here's the uh, text in full. Well, as I said, in our opinion, the only piece of information is that there is future, there's the danger that in future there will no longer hints because the sources might be in danger. Well, I mean, that's, you could think about that yourself. So not really a lot of information. The whole rest, the reigning bit, are just common places. In particular, that, that, in particular the before, after, and during the situation, you can cite anything at any point. It's not a lot of adding, not, not adding a lot of information. Well, the, most of it is, you, he could have just not bothered with it. No. Uh, the, the question is, why is that? So, this is a rhetorical question. Well, that's what he's supposed to answer, but what's the point of making, answer, asking? Well, we, you could say, well, these are just like sort of casual texts, or well, maybe he's just giving a speech. It's not the official, it's not meant for the history books, but the things that are meant for the history books is a statement by the government. They should be, you know, they should contain information that should be able to be put into the history books. And they, sh they shouldn't sort of talk around, but they should just speak directly. Well, let's have a look at how it's really the case. All right, so Angela, as I said, I think Angela Merkel is a grand mistress of this kind of, sp this kind of talking. We'll see quickly, we don't hear because it's too long. And we talk about the statement about one of the questions that has really a lot of people have thought about about what is the what does the what kind of plan does the uh, government have to deal with more than a million refugees? That's the whole that's the whole statement. You don't have to be able to read it. There's going to be a few examples. The whole point is this is the whole mass, and she talked in the parliament. She took a long time about five thousand words, two hundred thirty-seven words about the topic, how are they going to deal with these refugees? This is what it looks like um, if you take out all the bullshit. <laughs> if you take out all duplicates, 
all the sort of I'm going to, I'm going to be emphasized the following, uh, all the phrases. The funny thing is, you can still read the rest, and it's, it would still be a good speech. There's still some content, but that's not how it was held. Right, there's, that's about the percentage, about 2,000 words, 56%. Well, you could debate, of course, about how we uh, cut things. You could, you could talk about it, but you could say, but well, there's some piece of information here, and maybe you could cut, cut, cut something else. But, and I think the percentage is approximately correct. This is the official statement. Well, we talked about it for a long time. This has already been discussed. The funny, th the funny thing is, the, the more often we read it, the more we cut. All right, a few examples. Angela Merkel. Dear colleagues, the police and secret services are working on the high, with high pressure to clarify the terrible attacks and the terrorist instructions. Even in Germany, there's a high danger. So we follow all hints, we hold, and we have to, as we saw last Tuesday, we always have to make a difficult decision between freedom and security. I want to be clear, in the name of the whole government, we trust in our security infrastructure that they deal with things properly, and they need our political support, and they have it, because otherwise they cannot act. Two things are very important to me. First, and I want to, I want to thank the, the majority of the parliament. We want to be careful and guarded, and it is important that we did that before, even before the attacks. That we'll have, and that we enhance um, our technical and employee point of view. New, new employees. We are, we are, we are added a, a thousand new people for the new federal police. And in a, uh, until 2008, about 3,000 people, we will create so-called robust units uh, with the police, which will be equipped in such a way that they can deal with terroristic situations and thus expand our possibilities significantly beyond what what the currently the GSG-9 and the police can do. Through this enhancement, we modernize them. We, en we enhance the Interior Secret Service and the External Secret Service with with people as well. What does it say? That the whole I didn't mark it, mark it with color to make it harder. What does it actually say? It it says we're going to enhance the police and the uh, Secret Service, and we already decided that before we had these attacks. What the whole thing? Well, how did what is, how does this got to do anything to do with the whole refugee situation? Nothing. But it was talked about in detail during it. There's some cool words like robust units of the police, which need to be trained in such a way that they can deal with such a terroristic situation. Well, that way they be going. In. Well, I'm, I'm, I would hope so. Otherwise, they're pointless in such a situation. Right. Anyway, we're talking about refugees. Let's carry on. Maybe, maybe we'll learn what they actually want to know. What the refugees want to do. Because, you know, people think are interested and a lot of people are coming, what is the plan? All right, let's carry on. We have a clear demand to know according to which logic will the government uh, fight the, the sources of these ref refugees and the European deals and, the, and how it works on the national level. But we have to start with a Fighting the sources of the ref refugees, there are a lot. There is a lot of war and terrorism in a lot of areas. Nations are collapsing. For many years, we've read and heard and saw on the TV, but we, at the time, we didn't understand that that which happens in Aleppo and Mosul um, that is important for Stuttgart or Essen, and so we have to deal with this. And this will cause changes in our politics in favor of exterior politics, in favor of the development politics, we often ask ourselves, what does what mean, what does any act mean for us? I think it's obvious that that we need, a, we need to take this with patience and we need partners. Right. What, it, what does the, what's the plan the government has? They have a clear demand that they want to know about this. All right. 
you laugh. Well, the, the information is, is hidden, very well hidden. It says we have to do something. We have to do something abroad. We have to do something with our refugee politics. It will change something about the politics. We need patience and we can't do it alone. Oh, that's the information. Very well packaged. It's not all lying. It's about um, to present things in such a way that everyone thinks like they heard something that fit them and they're happy about it and they can sort of agree with it. They don't have to contradict it or reject it. Do we still have time? All right. Uh, here, a short example that's a lot older, just to show how you can get lost in such things. Christian Rock was a politician of this, uh, the Conservatives and said this amazing sentence. Uh, Bin Laden and other terrorists are not poor, but the, the social exclusion are the, is, the, is the trash of the sort of the... Um, <laughs> The phrase that the terrorism want to want to light up. He doesn't. He doesn't know really know what he's talking about. Just as a small example, as a joke. Well, there is a sort of serious background here. Phrases do contain information, as you can see it. This is so the data. Thanks. Thanks to Ad Floskovolke. Thank you very much, Floskovolke. The project from two journalists who use Google to scan for like 130 phrases and uh, empty phrases. They have a Twitter account and a website and they have an API, you can download them. We took it for 2015 and for some important events and then visualize them. And then you will see that you see some interesting things. In the middle, probably you can't read the description, what's all going all through, that's uh, without alternative. That's like the zero, zero, uh, zero variable of political communication. So everything is without alternative because that we stand here is without alternative because then there wouldn't be a lecture and you would be bored. So you can see more. The first phrase, uh, over alienation, because some very conservative newspapers use them when talking about refugee problems. So human catastrophe is always is always used a few times. Human catastrophes, there were a lot of them. Most, Im most interestingly, they they get le they get less to the end of the year. So in the refugee situation, it uh, decreased. Then the the fear metaphor increased instead. There were a few uh, spikes for Syria, like uh, air raids, air bombings, and they mostly related to the, the war in Syria. And they got more important in the second part of the year, so without alternative. Then social tourism, it's, it's only used like the beginning when there were some refugee refugee uh, issue they use it often like a little bit in the beginnings especially CSU but Christian Democ Christian Social Democrats but so asylum critic critique critical people it's like a term used for Pegida those people criticizing the government and refugees. So then when uh, terms were criticized, they get less and less. And when there's debate about empty phrases or phrases, they, they are affected by that. Then there's the boat migrants. 
they start, there was a spike in spring when a lot of people try to go over the Mediterranean Sea. It was built, and they when when it was seen uh, what their what their story was, it was stopped. They stopped using this term. Then the refugee tsunami, it was used uh, very very frequently, especially in like autumn and winter, very popular. And then the refugee storm, or so the the fear is increasing and the empathy towards tragedy. The boat is full also at the end. Like yeah, it increases and this is a lot. So oh uh, no, maybe now the, you're you're enough and we have enough of you. So stay away. So empty phrases, phrases are important, and you think they're important, but you still have you have to apply a filter to know what's actually going on. So how how can this be contextualized in this important here? So the over alienation and the refugee storm is a, is a really strong thing in at the in the end. If something like this is used, people get used to it. And people get used to talking about conflicts, and that's dangerous. So you should you really shouldn't do that. You, everybody of you shouldn't should do that didn't use such phrases or terms. Now we get back to the hypotheses. In the natural sciences, you always try to disprove them. So as a social scientist, we have to prove them. So context is uh, blurred. I think this is clear that it's the information density is decreased or distracted from. I think that's especially is so with Range. He didn't say anything but wanted to make a press statement. So added some phrases. Distraction from what it's all about. Merkel was doing that especially, I think. Was only going about increasing the security services and that was embedded into that. So the occasion was refugees, but then she talked about this robust uh, entities of the police, like quotable phrases, can be seen in Vesurange especially, and yeah, also with Merkel and Demisier, you could see this. Like the keywords, and also pro project an openness towards people, and give the give the idea that they that they are heard. So sometimes things are contextualized in a harmless way, and sometimes well, not not so much. So from formulated in a way. Yeah. Just summarizing again. Die lügen nicht. They are not lying. And who says they are lying didn't understand what it's all about. It's about they don't want to want to disrespect you. They don't want you, you to say we don't want to be elected. You, I don't wouldn't elect him again because uh, they have to be re-elected. So they always try to take with them as many people as possible or uh, enable them to identify with these phrases because we are a society of majorities and that's the background. So it's not like evil in itself. So you, but you can change it by filtering and and also like by engaging with opinions that 
are maybe a bit different from yours and yeah and not talking so much bullshit wir haben noch ein paar minuten für fragen so ist so we have a few times few minutes for questions we have the mic microphones here Please formulate short and precise questions. Wir antworten natürlich in Floskeln. Ja. He'll answer in phrases. So, bis dahin aus dem Internet eine Frage. Ja, aus dem IRC. Question from IRC. When you're analyzing, are you also learning the meme? Not to date. We maybe we should be doing it. In particular, Demiser is very expressive. Merkel's uh, facial expression not that expressive, but with Demiser you can see it very clearly. Also, Miss von der Leyen, our defense ministry, she always was acting out with her hands and her, her blue, nice blue eyes. But to be honest, we limit ourselves to language. And well, um, so I've uh, when I was giving a presentation in Darmstadt, I am. Um, I um, I analyzed him in more detail the, f the famous press conference where he um, where he said um, about uh, about you know the, the, the populace could be being unsure about what he said. There's a lot there's a lot, there's a lot of expression. He looks to the, to the Ministry of Interior and he looks over to him and as if they were good buddies or he um, but the football guy who or the guy who's always pushing the microphones over to the museum. There's a lot of expressivity in the, um, in the gestures and in the facial expressions. You could do something about it. Uh, well, I'll think about it for the, for the future. Thank you. So I want to connect to that. The thing with the kind of presentation. So, so Range always looked down that he that he so he could talk well because so because he was using his special words and there this this word order was like uh, important for me because a government official can ask for a written order when he is not well, we're happy to, to take about such, such hints. Please tweet us, mail us, uh, send us to our blog. Thank you. Okay, also Hinweise per email, Fragen jetzt, Mikrofon Nummer eins. Yeah, sorry, this is a ganz kleines bisschen off topic, aber ich um, habe trotzdem den Drang, dass. Also it's a bit off topic, but I have to say this. The scandal for me, so that she's explaining her foreign policy to me, but so that she's saying that it's all about combating the sources of the refugee problem and Absolutely. that she's saying that she would have fought against that earlier if she thought that it would have a diff an impact on Essen and Stuttgart. So it's a scandal that it doesn't concern us when we, when uh, it's not Yep, thank you, thank you. Microphone number three. Do you see the decreasing of information density again? Uh, it would be nice. From the analyzing of speech? That uh, would be nice. Well, no, I think it's a sort of political inevitability. The more, edu the more well educated the political are, the more people are in this political spectrum. In order, in order to unify and have have a lot of people this concept is want to sort of talk with the, with the, the, the center no one knows exactly what it is but everyone's trying to gather it, it doesn't have much to do with us it's think it's all about about political means to an end and i think it does it was done in a very cunning way as the famous press conference by Seehofer where everyone thought he wants to kick out the refugees or, or shoot them at the, at the board. But if you look exactly, he um, he talks about refugees and then he talks about immigration. So he's always talking about limiting immigration, which is something else about accepting refugees. 
it's very interesting about the through by thinking about the context. So the sort of random person in Bavaria thinks like, oh, finally someone's doing something at those those refugees. But he actually phrased it in such a way that you can't actually extract that. But what he wants to do is limit immigration, which is a little bit different about than refugees than to kicking out refugees. But but nevertheless, he was is able to con involve these sort of random pub people. So he wants to get the people, the pub people, on board through the context. And then those people who are, who are listening a little more carefully, because those people say, oh, we're not really against the immigration of uh, accepting refugees. So the, the other conservative party also understands it. I, I don't want to admire it, but it's very, very clever how he does it to say something where the pub people will say, oh, yeah, right, finally. And the other people, well, all right, well, fine, we can live with that. That's the trick. Question from IRC. Someone mentioned the first foundation novel where the delegates from the Imperium um, didn't actually say anything, but this was only mentioned after intensive analysis. Can, can we maybe automate your bullshit analysis so that we can get this through some filters? We thought about it. We thought about it. Well, we will meet in January with Flosko Volker, who do have an algorithm, whether we can't do it automatically. It's not that easy because the context is very important. A few things you can, a few things can be automatically, automated automatically. So if something has already been said, for example, Range, say, Range says three times independent and two times says expert, well, even the computer is able to notice that. But um, uh, it's difficult. The same thing is said slightly differently in a different way, but I think we can do something there. We'll keep thinking about it, um, and, we'll, and we can do some automation, I think. Thank you. Microphone number one, please. So these phrases are also used by people that you're close to without really knowing about it, and so I can reflect with those people about the phrases, but then the debate is probably well, uh, <laughs> over. Punch them would be my, uh, you know, be my solution. Punch them and shake them. Well, on the contrary, well, I, I mean, people who are close to me. Well, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too. Well, I think it's important to think about phrases. I think you can do it in a peaceful way to say, well, all right, what did you just say? What, what, what does it mean to you if you say, like, if you use that phrase, what does it do to you? What does it do to me? So th I think it's very important to think, talk about it. I think people, yeah, I do know that people get a bit annoyed and you know roll their eyes, but but please, please do talk about it. It's very important. Last question, microphone four. Hi. I really liked your visualization of the Floske Cloud, Phrase Cloud. But you can see that some of the phrases pop up uh, all at once. And then, how did you like analyze how this happens or why? And when it decreases, increases? Like if it originates from a blog and going somewhere else, or right. So Flaskowalker analyzes Google News, so it evaluates blogs and media. There are no statements from politicians, only just indirectly if they are quoted. So I think you're right. For example, ov overly foreign is that we we could we could we get it out. But there was a blog by the extreme right, and then I think. I think there was the Young Freiheit newspaper, which then distributed. And this you can also see in Google News, because other people quoted, they said that. So in some cases, you can analyze it, but it's very difficult to analyze. And we did it a couple of years ago using the uh, the umbrella, the um, economic umbrella. You can see fairly well the first uses and uses. You can some often see whether it's more coming from the politicians or from the journalists. You often, it depends on the the word, but 
it's indeed quite interesting where does it come from and who's who's bringing it up. So, in in this in this case, it was in the case of the umbrella, it was the Financial Times, and it was very quickly used, and then suddenly, and then it started getting used by the politicians, by the sort of Parliament and the Ministry. Initially, it was the Financial Times. Some things are the other way around. For example, data retention that goes comes from the politician, then goes to the media. It's it's a it's a circle, it's a circuit. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.